Okay, I'm going to first look, identify the objectives of the proposal, then I'm going to ask two simple questions. The first question is, is this proposal, is this objective a reasonable one? Is it an objective which is worth pursuing? And secondly, I'll ask, is the FTT the instrument which is best suited to, uh, to obtain this objective? So I'll be adopting this simple approach to the analysis of the proposal. So that's what I propose doing. What I won't have time to do, unfortunately, is take you through the design of the tax. Um, all I can say is that it's a very broad tax. It is a tax which catches purchases and sales of transferable securities, both debt and equity. It catches purchases and sales of units in collective investment undertakings, repos, uh, stock lending, derivatives, the lot. So it's a, it's a tax with a very broad base. Okay. So here's an outline of my presentation. I'll start with some background, just to put the proposal in its proper context. Then I'll get to the meat of the presentation, which I, as I said, deals with the objectives and instrument choice, and I'll end with some conclusions. And I, I, um, much of what I'll say today is based on a paper I wrote with um, two um, colleagues of mine, economists from Oxford, Clemens Fuist and Tim schmidt Eisenlor. Okay, so I'll start with the background. And I guess the starting point is that in the aftermath of the financial crisis, a consensus seemed to develop that some new form of taxation should be imposed on the financial sector. And there were a number of reasons for this, but there was a consensus that there should be some new form of financial, uh, on taxation on the financial sector. The question was, which type of tax should we go for? And in fact, in September of 2009, the G20 asked the IMF to look at various options and come up with proposals. And the IMF came up with two proposals. It proposed a financial stability contribution, which essentially is a bank levy. And the bank levy is a balance sheet tax. It's a tax on the liabilities of banks. Um, and it also proposed a financial activities tax, a FAT. And the financial activities tax actually is a family of taxes. There are different versions of the FAT, but essentially they're always a tax on profits and remuneration. Now, there are, we usually speak about three types of fats, and depending on how you define profits and remuneration, you end up with a tax which has a uh, different objective. The IMF also looked at the FTT. However, having looked at it and considered it, it concluded that the FTT does not appear well suited to the specific purposes set out in the mandate. Okay, so that, those were the IMF's proposals. What happened since then? Since then, 10 member states, including the UK, France, and Germany, adopted a bank levy along the lines suggested by the IMF. And at a, at a European level, the Commission un started a process whereby it analyzed two options. So two options for an EU white tax on the financial sector. The first option was the FTT. The second option was the FAT. So at the first stage, the Commission undertook a quick preliminary examination, examination, and on the basis of this pre preliminary examination, it concluded in October of 2010 that the FAT, uh, um, it said there appears to be greater potential for the FAT at an EU level. So at the first stage, the commission came down in favor of the FAT. But at the same time, the commission also launched a deeper investigation into these two taxes. So it launched an impact assessment which looked at the FAT and the FTT. And um, eventually it published this impact assessment, which was made up of 19 documents, one of which is over 700 pages long. So the commission really did undertake a considerable amount of work in analyzing these two options. Okay, so in, on the 28th of September of 2011, the commission put forward its proposal, and this time it proposed an FTT. As you all know, this proposal has been incredibly divisive. A number of member states are strongly in favor of it, including France and Germany, and a number of member states are against it and even strongly against it, including the UK, Netherlands, and as we've just heard, Malta too. Okay, so that's the status quo. At the moment, we have, um, we're not sure what's going to happen. The Commission and the European Parliament are still pushing very strongly for the FTT they proposed. There is talk of a compromise solution, perhaps a tax which goes along the lines of the UK stamp duty on shares, so a tax with a narrower base. There is talk at times that the nine member states who are in favor of the tax could go ahead through the enhanced cooperation procedure. 
But what I'm going to focus on is the proposal of the Commission, because the Commission is, pushing, st is still pushing strongly f for this tax. It's backed by France and Germany, and the Parliament is pushing equally strongly. Okay, so this is the, this is the start of the meat of my presentation, and as I said, I'll, I'm going to adopt a simple two-step approach after first having identified the objectives. So I'm going to look at each objective and ask two questions. The first one is, is this objective a reasonable one? And secondly, is the FTT the, best, the instrument which is best suited to achieve this objective? And there are four objectives. And I'll go through them one by one. Um, and just to give you a, a, a warning beforehand that I'm going to spend most of the time on the first objective. OK, so the first objective is that of raising revenue fraud from the financial sector. And the Commission actually gives three reasons why we might want to raise revenue from the financial sector. And I'll go through each in turn. So the first reason is to recover part of the costs of the crisis. And I think that's a reasonable objective. So we know that the financial sector wasn't solely responsible for the financial crisis. Other, other constituencies might, must take part of the blame. But we know that the financial sector definitely play, paid the part. And because it played a part, it is right that it contributes to, towards the cost, to the recovery of the cost of the crisis. So I think that's a reasonable objective. I think it's a, yeah, we we'll can discuss it. I think it's reasonable. So that's the first question. Second question is, is the FTT the instrument which is best suited to obtain this objective? And I think the answer is no for a number of reasons. I put one on my slides. So one reason is that the true incidence, the economic incidence of the tax is likely to fall on consumers. Now, there's a, as you probably know, there's a difference between the legal incidence and the economic incidence of a tax. The legal incidence is, is borne by the person who, is, who pays the tax. The economic incidence is, the, is borne by the person who actually bears the tax. So although the, tax, the legal incidence of the tax will be on the financial entities, the economic incidence of the tax is likely to fall on consumers. Now, I'm saying that whilst obviously acknowledging that there's always some uncertainty as to who bears the true incidence of a tax. I mean, there's uncertainty about who bears the true incidence of a corporate tax. But, um, so there's always some uncertainty. However, there seems to be, the consensus seems to be that the likely, it is likely that the incident, economic incidence of the FTT falls on consumers. So here we have a tax which is meant to recover the cost of the crisis from the financial sector, which is actually borne by the consumer. So that doesn't make much sense. The FAT would be better in this regard, and it would be better in this regard because whilst there is some uncertainty about the economic incidence of the FAT, it, uh, there appears to be a greater likelihood that it falls on its intended target. So I would prefer an FAT to achieve this objective. Okay, so that was the first reason given by the Commission as to why we might want to impose a tax on the financial sector to raise revenue. The second reason is to compensate for the undertaxation of the sector as a result of the VAT exemption. Um, so the Commission at times um, presses hard on this argument. So it says, if you, this was the press release uh, which accompanied the proposal. So it said, the financial sector enjoys a tax advantage of approximately 18 billion per year because of the VAT exemption on financial services. So it uses this argument in quite a strong form. However, although, so we know that VAT, that uh, financial services, most financial services are exempt for VAT purposes. However, this leads to an under taxation for services to consumers and an over taxation for um, a higher tax burden for transactions to businesses. And as the commission itself recognized in the impact assessment, the extent to which the exemption constitutes a tax advantage for the financial sector is an unsettled empirical question. In fact, there have been um, studies, so some studies do show that it leads to an under taxation. However, there have been studies, including the one by Lockwood, which was uh, commissioned by PwC, which found neither under taxation nor, nor, nor over taxation. So the point I'm making here isn't that Lockwood study is better than the ones that find under taxation, but the point is that as the commission itself recognized, this is an, an unsettled empirical question, so it's not really um, reasonable to use it as an objective. 
Okay, so that's the first question. Is the objective reasonable? Let's move to the second question. So let's assume that the financial sector is under tax because of this VAT exemption. Would the introduction of the FTT be the correct way to obtain this objective? And the answer is definitely no. The commission itself in the impact assessment says the following. The transaction taxes, as discussed in this paper, are not really effective to compensate for the VAT exemption. And FAT, in fact, could be better for these purposes. So, as I said, there are different types of FAT, but one type of FAT actually results in a tax on value added, because profits and remuneration, of course, are equal to value added. An even better um, solution to this problem, or an even better way of achieving this objective, would be to remove the exemption altogether, as the Commission itself recognizes.